I'm now trying to remember. I should. I, I was thinking about in my research. I was going to write this down. And I forgot to look it up. But I, I'll put a link in the, into the video afterwards. But um, he has a, a a kind of little a movie documentary about him and his brother. They're like the only family that have got three you know brothers from the family in the NBA. Um, and this this goes from their story of like escaping you know and you know escaping across uh across europe trying to escape um persecution and 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 stuff like that and it's actually quite an interesting story quite an interesting story so um watch watch the video but janice is um the star player and the captain of uh the milwaukee bucks who are last year's nba champion and they were knocked out early in this year's championships by the Miami Heat. Now, the Miami Heat are very lowly ranked this year, and they weren't expected to do well. And they kind of did really well against the Bucs, which wasn't expected. And a, a sports reporter asked the coach and then asked uh, Giannis this same question. And Giannis's response was, I would have to say that this response will go down in history as the greatest ever sports response to a loss, right? To if, if you want to know how a leader should respond to a loss, listen to this response. So the question from the sports reporter was, do you view this season as a failure? Now, I'll link you yeah, the links below. All our articles are below. Go and watch the video. His full response is just phenomenal. Um, and yeah, on top of it, just as a bit of a side note, he keeps pulling himself up for getting personal as like in the response. I'm like, there is so much wisdom in this man. And like just for him to go, and wouldn't you, oh, actually, no, 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 that's getting too personal. And, and then at the end, he goes, sorry for getting personal. Like just there's, you can still defend something without getting personal about it, which I think that, that that's kind of, that's a kind of side point, but this was his response. So why you ask me that question now, it's a direct quote. So his English isn't all that great. So excuse, excuse my, my English while I'm saying this, it's the wrong question. There's no failure in sports. There's good days, bad days. Some days you're able to, to be successful some days you are not. Some days it's your turn. Some days it's not. That's what sports is about. You don't always win. And then later on, he kind of emphasizes that it isn't about the loss. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. That every season... It gives us a lesson, gives us something to learn from so we can build on. You know, we can't always win every season, but there might be a building building phase. And I think this is really great as a leader. And even looking at business leaders and ministry leaders and everything like that, like you can't always have the best year in business or the best year in ministry because sometimes they're building years right? Sometimes they're rebuilding years where you've got to rebuild your team, rebuild your leadership team, rebuild your congregation, rebuild your, your focus as an organization, re restructure. Like, like sometimes we do have to go through steps to success seasons. Not every year can be a win. I know that's been my experience over the last couple of years. We, I've been, we've been in a, We've been in struggle season for the last couple of years. Made some big life changes, big business changes, and we're just in building phase right now. And we're just slowly starting to see, slowly now starting to see the, the results come through. But it's we can't always win. Dr. Rod, how... How would you advise someone that you're mentoring that that they've you know, say a business leader that they've just lost team members, lost some clients, like gone gone through this crazy uphaul in their business? How do you shift their focus from wallowing in their sorrows and making excuses and blaming people and all that sort of stuff? How do you shift that into helping them see what the lesson is in that situation? Well, I think. 
we need to be clear why why it is that the person is experiencing what what they are experiencing. So the example you you used of say staff, you know, key staff leaving and so on. I would want to know whether or not this was a systematic thing. In other words, is this mm. a feature of the business? So in the case of staff leaving, does your business or organisation have a high turnover of staff? If the answer is yes, then let's have a look at what might be causing that high turnover. And there mm. could be a myriad of reasons, both what I would call push factors as well as pull factors. Yeah. So there, there's usually something that we're attracted to if we resign to go to another position. Um, and, and often there are what I would call push factors. There are things happening in, in our own business or work situation that are causing us to, to want to, to move on as long as there is another perhaps better position to go to. So I would want to look at some of the data such as what is the turnover of staff to see whether or not there's something what you might call systematic going on here because it may or may not point to the actual leader there may be some deficiency in their leadership style perhaps that could actually be remedied through through some some training yeah and you know i've talked to people in the past and, and made very simple suggestions like consciously slow your speech down because you speak very fast so that it sounds staccato and people interpret that as a, as a negative kind of personality. So there are little things that people, people can do to make those around them feel, feel more comfortable. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, Self-reflection. But that, that's really it. Like being able to... That's one thing that I do some many times to a fault is I'm over analytical of everything that I do and, and why it happens and everything like that. And, and yeah, I think back to, you know, my, my exit out of, I suppose, professional ministry, um, back into the marketplace. Now, my senior pastor at that time didn't let, let, let's just say he didn't treat me the best on, on the exit. It wasn't, it wasn't the most, most amicable way or probably the best way that I would suggest a transition. However, looking back on it, I, look, once again, I know that he was going through his own pressures and his own, own challenges that he was facing and, and everything like that. And, and there was, there was so many other factors involved, but I actually, looking back on it, was able to analyze like what, what happened here. And one big question that I asked myself is, what is God doing here? Now, it doesn't mean that God always causes those things to happen. I actually kind of feel like it was in my interpretation of what that situation was is, I know God called me to give us give him a sabbatical out of the marketplace, give him a year volunteering in, in the local church. And I did that that year that he got, called me to give was turned into almost three years and me trying to almost forming it into a career. And I believe it was just God kind of pulling the rug out from underneath me to force me back into the marketplace because I obviously missed the messages along the way of him going, you're not meant to be in the church. You're meant to be in the marketplace. Right. And so I can, I can see what God is doing was doing in that situation. Now, like I said, it's not always, I interpret it now. I think we try to blame or, or whatever, put too much on God. Sometimes it's not. When I say I feel like it was God pulling the rug out, he may not have been. It may have just been poor leadership and that just being the situation, whatever. That's the way I like to look at it. Like, oh, yeah, that, that's the way. And it helps me reconcile with the situation a little bit more. Now, just be, just don't, just don't think that God is always doing something like God is punishing me because of this or God is like, it's not, it's not always that. However, God does not always create the situation. However, God can always use the situation right now. God may not have been pulling the rug out from underneath me. However, the rug was pulled under out from underneath me and God probably went great. This is a good moment to get you back into the marketplace. Right. And so maybe, just ask yourself, what is God doing through this? 
or what will God be doing with this, you know, um, to help you guide. Dr. Rod, what was a loss that you have faced as a leader that you you found challenging to find the lesson, but you found the lesson? And how did you actually find that lesson? Well, I have had one, one instance that I can recall when I was involuntary, involuntarily removed from a senior position and someone else was, was brought in to, um, to take, take it on. And I was mightily disappointed because that was my dream job. That was the job I really wanted. And um, I think I did a reasonably good, good job in, in, in the role. But um, look, I had the opportunity to meet the person who, who came into the role and, and um, I realised after I'd had a short conversation with them, they were going to do a pretty decent job. Who knows? They, they mightn't have been as good as me. I don't know. We'll never know. But I was quite certain that he was going to actually care for the people and that was really important That's to me mm -hmm. that um, he, he, would, he would not be, as it were, um, spending time to try to remove mm -hmm. the, the general kind of principles that I'd put in place as a, as a leader, which placed a very high priority on ascertaining and meeting the needs of the people who, who worked for me. And, um, you know, in, in terms also of being available for, for people to come and, and chat to if they needed to, that didn't change. And so what really reconciled me was the fact that the person who'd been brought in to replace me, he did a good job. He was yeah. a good guy. He, he was another Christian. It was a Catholic, I was a Pentecostal, so there were clearly some differences theologically, but our understanding of the importance of human beings, the centrality of human beings in creation was, was exactly the same. Um, our, our, our moral and ethical positions on all of the key um, issues that were facing the organisation at the time, they were absolutely identical. So I, I was able to forgive because it wasn't all that hard in the sense that I was very confident that the new leader would would sort of maintain what I considered to be all of the positive initiatives that I'd taken uh, when I came into that position. And I might add, after another person who also had similar similar values, so there was a, a procession of, of three people in that position, all of whom had, you know, almost identical understandings about the centrality of human beings in the workplace so i got over it um it took me a while and i do recall i may have shared it on this podcast that months later months i'm talking about seven eight nine ten months after after that had happened i, w I was given another job in the organization by the way so i, I wasn't made made redundant or, or sacked or anything like that but it was many months afterwards, I, I was going to, oddly enough, to the launch of a, a new CD, so we're talking a few years ago, a new CD by a country, a country music artist. Hold on a second, Dr. Rod. I just want to explain. A CD is short for compact disc, and it's a round thing that looks like a bit of a mirror that we old people used to put music on and slide it into a computer or into our car and listen to about six, depends if it was MP3 or in real disc format, 16 to, to 20 songs on it. That was back in the day when we used to carry around that. Right. Just to explain what those things are. Yeah. Uh, well, most people know what a DVD is. So a CD looks like a DVD, although they're dying out as well. They're dying out as well. But anyway, off I was, my wife and I were in the car and we got halfway there and I just felt the Lord nudging me saying, you've got to forgive the guy who um, who effectively sacked me. And, and it was strange because I really thought I had. Yeah. But obviously God knew me better than I knew myself. So I said, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive. And um, that was that. <laughs> so good. Forgiveness but, is so crucial to leadership i mean that we, we teach that in our second week of our of our leadership program is 
yeah, forgiveness. You can't go in leading other people if you're carrying unforgiveness. And we, yeah, that's really important. Thank you, Dr. Rod. And so remember, if you suffer loss in your business, in your ministry, in your life, it's not a failure. As Janice says, it is steps to success. So I hope you can carry that with you and in, in facing your next loss, find, find what your, what the lessons are in it, see what God is doing through the situation and forgive. That's, that's probably an important one. Hey, that was an excerpt from our On The Cube Leadership Podcast. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, put a comment below. And if you want to see more content like this, faith-based leadership development content, make sure you check out our channel, give it a subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you'll be notified when we release new content.